How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? <laughs> I still don't know if I like that uh, nickname, but it's kind of fun. It's a little bit interesting. Uh, we're sitting at 7-6, uh, just a few days into the season. Draft day is in 47 days. And scouting-wise, things are looking a little bit interesting. All the blue chips, if we could pick one of them up, uh, I don't think we would mind it. But just looking at potential... I haven't seen anything crazy. Joe Bean, the reliever, <laughs> could be uh, okay. Um, and then guys that we've scouted already that aren't blue chips, if we go all the way down here, look very mediocre. Vincent Bouchang, the Canadian left fielder, is an 80 potential, but 50 overall. Uh, Felipe Mosquera, uh, Mosquera? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Mosquera probably is correct. 75 potential, 70 overall currently. That is pretty good for a 20-year-old. Uh, it looks like he has decent contact and power. You like it at the second base. He can also play first base. Wouldn't mind that. And then we also maybe have Omar Salazar. That seems more like a later round pickup to me, though. So I'm trying to make sure that we are scouting as efficiently as possible. Uh, we did uh, hire a couple of top tier scouts last time around. So hopefully they are worth their money. And I think that we're going to do something here. Free agency. I saw something that made sense. The most uh, successful or the highest overall free agent available right now is the reliever Trevor Rosenthal. Uh, if we go to the relieving stuff, you can see he would be our third best or tied for a second best reliever. So I think that that is something that could be really, really useful for us because I think our, our bullpen is a little bit weak. Um, Drew Steckenrider is doing okay. Diego Castillo is doing okay. But once you get down there, uh, it gets a little bit rough. And we have given up a lot of runs. So we definitely need that. He's gone down this year. Uh, the 31-year-old. Um, he's okay. Uh, I think there's some seasons where he's looked mediocre. Uh, two years ago, to, or three years ago, 2019, 13.5 ERA. But then 2020, limited amount of innings pitched for both of them. Just 23 innings pitched, but a 1.9 ERA positive whip i think he has a slightly positive war so he wants a decent amount uh we will go ahead and offer him a contract because i think that we need the depth anyways and i know that i've been saying oh we don't want 30 year olds but we need the depth so unfortunately for us he wants a long contract he's 31 he's like i want to get paid before i retire but there's no way we're giving him five years so i would like to give him four but i don't want to pay him or three but i don't want to pay him as much as he wants so we're going to offer him four years. Hopefully, we can trade him if he has a good season. Um, payout structure, we're going to front load it because that's what I prefer to do if we're not planning on like going all in on one guy this year. We want to give ourselves as much uh, payroll next year as possible. And then he's looking at 2.9 million a year. Let's back this off to an 11 million four-year deal. And he just wants that to go up. So we'll just keep going up until he agrees. And this seems a little bit cheesy, but it's part of the game. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. 11-7. Are we going to have to offer him $3 million a year? Oh my goodness, he is being really greedy. 12.3. But we pick up a new pitcher, and that should help our depth quite a bit. As again, 7-6. and six. Let's just get right into the games. We are starting off against Houston. And uh, we might player lock if we could see him, but uh, right away, a critical situation. Top of the ninth, zero outs. We got a three-run lead. Can Chris Flexen finish it off? He's got eight innings pitched. Can we get the shutout finished? Jordan Alvarez, one for three, is the first to bat in this first bit of pitching that we will uh, go through on the day. Try to hit him with a little curveball, and he's going to hit it into the shift. Fraser fields it, and the second baseman gets it to the first baseman for the first out. The shutout still alive for now. Just noticing it is Jackie Robinson Day. So 42s all over the field. First pitch of the second at bat is fouled off. It was a, maybe a strike of a fastball, and we're going to throw another one trying just to catch the edge. The bottom edge of the zone. Good accuracy. Decent release. And he swings on it. J.P. Crawford not going to be able to get there. So it's going to get through for a base knock with one out. Thankfully, three run lead. So even if we do give up the shutout, it's not going to be the end of the world. Altuve there keeping his hitting streak alive for the time being as Alex Bregman comes up to bat. It's going to be 1-0 as he takes a ball probably don't have to be too worried about the steal in this situation as we put a circle change right down the middle and hopefully we don't do the same with the 12-6 curve and ooh, 
that's hanging a lot higher than I want. But we get consecutive back-to-back -back strikes. And now this could be a really good spot for a high fastball. And Mitch Hanniger is going to be tracking back to the warning track. Should be able to get under it in time. And he makes the out, so it's two gone. Oh, still, man, a lot that uh, needs to go right for Houston. Almost gave up a two-run homer there. That would have been a sad way to give up the shutout, that's for sure. Flex in just 83 pitches to this point. Pretty impressive. Yuli Gurriel is up for strike a cutter. Upper right-hand part of the zone for strike number one. We're going to stay up inside. A little four-seamer. He's going to foul it off, but it puts him in quickly in a, into an 0-2 count. And this is where I'm just going to try to toss a little curveball on him, see if we can get him to swing. And oh, gosh, really hung that one up. But thankfully, he fouls it off. We stay alive, and we can just throw a fastball down at the bottom of the zone. Maybe we get lucky and catch, or he can foul it off. Crawford can't get there. And it's going to be a, another base uh, hit as they move Jose Altuve to the second. Now we're in a little bit of trouble. So now it's uh, Diaz up to bat. Uh, tying run at the plate. <laughs> oh, first pitch. Just high for ball one. This has me worried. I'm going to keep with the fastball. Feels like we have decent control over it at the moment. Second perfect throw in a row. And we do get the strike. He is batting zero against lefties and 100 against righties. That is a pretty rough start to the season as this might be an RBI. Hanniger fields it, throwing it home. But he's going to be late, and it's not going to get to Murphy in time. So the shutout is gone, and I just cannot get this final out on the board. That's pretty rough. Maybe you need to go away from the fastball so much, but we get strike one there. I think this could be a spot for a nice little cutter. So we'll look outside with it. Decent throw, and man, tying run being at first scares me. Winning run, or leading run potentially at the plate, but he fouls it off 0-2, and this is a chance for us to get out of the gem. The eight hole on the lineup, a good person to foul off a pitch. And uh, who knows, maybe he just misses one of these. We're going to drop the circle, change low, out of the zone. No swing, ball one. Really would like to get the strikeout. Not sure how it's going to happen. We're going to try to keep the curveball nice and low. And that should just be a ground out. Frazier fields it, throws it to France, and that'll be out number three in the top of the ninth. And there's the final first game of the day. Jackie Robinson Day. We get the win. We continue to stay above 500, and that might be enough to put us back in the lead of the division. 8.6 innings pitched before giving up a run is pretty brutal. Jared Kelnick. One for two with a home run. I think that gives him five home runs now on the season. Definitely leading the team. Pretty impressive. Uh, I'm more than happy with that. Great way to start out the episode. Eight and six now. As, oh, the Pirates have offered us a trade. Jose Caballero, the third baseman, is who we would be giving up for a center fielder. Um, Is he any good? Greg Allen? Is that something that we would want? He is uh, 29 years old, deep potential, 67 overall. Almost no chance that we take that. I don't even care who it is that we're giving up. Uh, Jose is 25. Yeah, uh, he, he saves us $650,000. That is an automatic decline for me. And we can see what we could do. Houston in the second game at home is a loss 2-6. to six. Uh, that's Jose De Jesus, so kind of, uh, lower in the rotation. And it's Robbie Ray, who has not really had a good start to this season. Unable to get the win so far, but we could be in a good spot. It is a player lock with Mitch Hanager. He needs a triple for the cycle. We are absolutely obliterating these guys. We'll hop in, see if we can get a good at-bat or two in. But it's 11-1 to 1 in the bottom of the seventh. Man, loading in here. Showed the stats for the team so far. We are last in the league in runs scored with just 40. Pretty brutal. Um, we would like that to be higher. Definitely happy to be 8-6 and six with only 40 runs. But that just means when we lose, we give up a lot. And when we win, they're pretty close games. And that sounds about right. Taking a strike on the first pitch. Two outs, runners in the corners. And it's going to be quickly 0-2. Didn't feel confident at swinging at that fastball. But now we are definitely in danger. Hector is just coming in to relieve. That's going to be ball one. Good eye on that. I feel like I'm complimenting myself. But for me, 
That is a good eye, because typically I would swing at that pitch. And we take ball two. I wouldn't mind taking a walk. I honestly don't think we're hitting the cycle. A triple is very hard to, to hit, especially when you're not incredibly fast. But we do load the count, and a walk is a walk. But, oh, I, I, I mean, I would rather hit a home run than a triple, to be honest. Runners going, swinging at the sinker. Good timing, but I definitely thought it was going to be up. Good break on that. Kind of a shame. That's the kind of pitch that you could launch out if you make contact with it. Still three and two. And we make good contact. Good timing, but it was low and away. It gets down. I'm turning too risky to go for this. We're going to get two RBIs. Honestly, I probably should have turned three. They would have given us the triple. We would have hit for the cycle. But two RBIs is a lot safer and... You know, that we'll take that. Uh, lucky that the diving catch isn't made, to be honest. Kyle Lewis has been having a pretty mediocre start to this season. We'll see what he can do. Oh, two count. I'm taking off. I think he's going to make contact. He does, but it's caught by whoever's playing first base for Houston right now. And, uh, well, we probably will get the win here. We're up 13 to 1. So it is, in fact, a win for the Mariners. Nine and six. Every single one of these wins is important. If we could get anywhere near 100 on the season, you would love to see it. I think we had 90 last year. Mitch Hanniger, we do get player of the game. Four for five, a home run, a double, or two doubles and a single. Uh, Robbie Ray gets his first win of the season. Seven, seven innings pitch, five hits, 11 strikeouts. We'll definitely take that. The wins just continue to keep coming. Great news for us. Five and 10 for Houston. It's going to put them in a little bit of a hole. Can we get to double-digit wins here against Texas? The Rangers are 7-9 and nine to our 9-7. and seven. I think that, yeah, that should put us in the lead of the division. Angels one or half a game back. So we'll try to improve that there. Logan Gilbert uh, is getting another chance to improve his record. And we're going to hop in bottom of the 10th. Zero outs, a tie game, and a chance to walk it off with J.P. Crawford. Adam Frazier on second. And that last game actually really jumped up our rankings. We went from 40 runs total on the season to 53. So jumped us up not to last place in all of baseball. And we have uh, all three outs to work with here. So even if we just have a sacrifice fly or a grounder that allows Adam to move to third, that's all fine with me. Not swinging at the first pitch, a really high inside fastball. Crawford batting 118 with runners in scoring position so far. And he's one for four today. What can we do? Second pitch coming. A little bit higher than I would have liked to have swinged at. So we just look at strike number one. Josh Spores. Not sure if that's how we're saying it. His first two pitches. He's coming in trying to save something here. And he's dealing us another ball. So we are ahead in the count, which is looking real good. Shouldn't take all that much. Anything into the gap should be enough to get our RBI. Bad swing. Putting it deep enough. We're going to be able to tag up here, I think. Little bit risky. Could we get gunned out here? No. Bad throw from the outfield. That was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. First out, but we move the runner to third. And it's time for Jesse Winkler to come up. A triple and a single today. Batting pretty well all season long. And yep, I do not blame Texas for this decision. An intentional walk to set up the potential double play. Unfortunately, it's going to bring Mitch Hanniger. No, Billy Hamilton up to bat. Um, We'll go for a little pinch runner for sure. Dylan Moore to replace Jesse Winkler. 71 speed as opposed to a 28. Makes a lot of sense to me. Not quite quick enough to feel confident stealing here. But could help us not get hit with a double play. That's a good strike on the first pitch of the at-bat. Low inside fastball catches the edge of the zone. Again, just trying to look for our pitch in these at-bats, especially in this situation in the game. And, oh, dip the PCI on the 99-mile-an-hour fastball just inside. 0-2 is the count very quickly. Tough swing, and it's going to be out, number two. Oh, that almost was enough to win it. The curveball we got on it, but just not able to lift it up over the second baseman. Definitely unfortunate there, and we are an out away from going to the 11th inning. Not what we want to see. 
Bad swing for me. Got me with the off-speed pitch, the slider breaking away from where I was looking. No chance to make contact with it as I'm not stealing here. You don't have to try and pick us off, that's for sure. Oh, won the count. Runners in the corners. This could be very big. And it's a high inside fastball that we just weren't ready for. Kind of sitting on a breaking pitch quickly. 0-2 oh once again. Tough spot. And we make contact. If only, if only, there was just one out. It's going to be a warning track fly ball caught to end the 10th. Oh, man. If that was the second out, it's a game. A little walk off sack fly. Unfortunately, we got Seager up to bat first. Seager, Simeon, and Garver. Oh, that's, that's kind of worrisome. So Drew Steckenrider pitching here as Corey Seager is first up to bat. We are definitely going to be in some danger as we do get strike one. It is Solak on second, probably ready to run. He's pretty quick down there. And oh, we just hung a curveball high in the zone. Thankfully, it, he gets out in front of it, fouls it off and maybe sets us up here. A beautiful shot there. Got to try to get the strike out. Good pitch, but it's popped up. Kyle Lewis super late to react. That's going to be an RBI all too easily. Nothing that we can do there. Oh, what a little looper into center field. Definitely a bummer. I, I don't feel confident that we're going to be able to match that. And no outs with a runner on first. This could get ugly really quick. Going to keep Drew Steckenrider in for now, though. That's what I'm committed to. Might not be the play as Marcus Simeon comes up to bat. 0 for 3 on the day makes me feel somewhat confident. Curveball finds the zone for strike number 2. And we're going to try to hit him with that high fastball. I feel like this could be one that's absolutely driven. He turns on it. And he checked it. That was awfully close, but that looks like a decent enough call to me. Let's go back to this curveball down in the zone. No swing. Just missed the edge. 2-2 two and two is the count. Man, catcher really wants me to get him swinging on this curveball. I'm going to trust him. And there it is. Strikeout looking as we get out number one. This is never what you want to see, but at least we're staying alive here. Fastball just missed for ball number one. Second rider. Man, I just am so cautious throwing this many curveballs. But if we can keep finding the zone while these guys think they're going to drop out, that's all fine with me. Mitch Garver, definitely a guy I am worried about cranking one on us, but he swings and misses for strike number two. And we're going to go with that high inside fastball. Try to blow it past him for strike number three. No, pops it off foul, stays alive. Gosh, it is just all curveballs. And he swings and misses for out number two. Ooh, that was a spooky one. Andy Banya's in now as Drew is trying to get out of any sort of hole that he's dug for himself. This one's popped up. Dylan Moore tracking it out left field on the warning track. He's going to get under it to end the top of the inning. Corey Seager, though, with the little base hit looper RBI gets the Rangers in front as we head to the bottom of the 11th. We're kind of at the rough part of the order as well. Ty France coming up. We've got Kyle Lewis pretty quick on base there at second but it's not going to be easy to bat him home John King into pitch swinging on the first pitch a terrible mistake that one needs to get down whoever the outfielder is tracking 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 it's out number one I just got us out number two you know I thought maybe we could catch him off guard tagging up there thought maybe we were quick enough thought maybe he was going to get stuck up on the tarp there he makes a great throw that was a really risky decision we are pretty late. Oh, that's tough. So, two outs. Eugenio Suarez 0 for 3 on the day. There's a really good sinker to swing on. Might have been enough to send it home. Our last hope. Two strikes remaining for the Rangers. And I'm swinging at a circle changeup way out of the bottom of the zone. 0-2 has me terrified. And I missed the changeup again. Oh, Bad base running. Bad batting. That's a tough loss. It's as simple as that. And that's a, it's a tough one to lose against the Rangers, especially. So it's a tough loss to start the home stand. Can we bounce back in game number two? My goodness, we are having critical situations all over the place. This time, it is the bottom of the ninth. No outs. Mitch Hanniger up to bat, down one. 
And we've seen my batting not be too great. John King did us dirty yesterday. Lucky ball one for the first pitch. One to know is the count. Oh my gosh. That circle change is just way too slow for me. I'm a mile out in front of that. One and one after the rough strike swinging. Puts the sinker low inside for ball number two. A base runner would be nice here, but I would like just a nice Mitch Hanniger home run. Oh, sitting on that circle change up. I was actually a little bit late that time. And gosh, apparently dipped the PCI all the way down at the bottom. Two strikes. Had to hit it, but it's a base hit right up the middle. No way we're beating that one out. Out number one. How about Tom Murphy? What can he do here? That's a real rough hit into the shift on that last one because we had it good, good right up the middle, but just uh, right to the shortstop. Nothing we can do there. Had to foul off the sinker. A little bit behind it. He's throwing tough pitches low in the zone. Quickly 0-2. And, and they got me swinging. Thought I was able to check up in time, but just unable to do so. My batting is not here so far today. Unless Kyle Lewis can do something for us. This is going to be back-to-back -back disappointing losses from my batting. It was I out in front of another circle change. My goodness, that is uh, the worst pitch for me to be swinging at right now. Cutter gets us 0-2. And we're able to hold off for ball one. Down to our last strike. Last ditch effort here. What can we do? Decent contact. That's going to be an easy fly out. They're tracking back to the warning track. I got a lot closer to being a home run than I expected, but it's just not quite enough. So we have lost this series. The question is, can we bounce back and get some sort of win? Gotta stay at that 500, man. So just like that, a couple of losses. We're back at 500. <laughs> Tied up with Texas. Need to get the win here, and we do. Good bounce back. Chris Flexen gets the win. 7-2. to We needed that one. On to Kansas City, and it's on to another critical situation at the top of the ninth. We have struggled here, but it's Paul Seawald, and he is having a really good start to the season, so maybe able to get us out of this jam. One out here. Runners on first and second. Nicky Lopez, who's two for four, up to bat. But is Paul Seawald, and he has done really good, a little bit bad on the first pitch. We miss outside. Lopez 158 with runners in scoring position so far on this season. We've got him swinging for strike one. I really like that high outside fastball against him. He's going to try to bunt, but he pops it up, and they call the infield fly on it. That was the best case scenario, I feel like. Just a nice easy out number two. Paul Sewell already with a bunch of saves in this game. Andrew Benintendi up to bat. What can we do? First pitch, a fastball low and just outside. Again, 143 with risk for Benintendi. We're going to keep these fastballs coming. Fouls that one off, one and one. Slider inside will try to just clip the zone, and he's going to foul it. Are we quick enough? Seawald gets it. <laughs> kind of stepped into the base pass, uh, forced him to avoid the collision. So it's an easy throw and an easy final out. My gosh, Paul Seawald is absolutely obliterating with his closes right now. That's going to be save number eight at the very least. And we can not get shut out in the series. Yeah, save number seven for Paul. We'll take that. We, we definitely like that. Nine hits only turns into three runs, so decent defense after the fact. Kelnick hits another home run. He's having a great season. Eric Swanson gets the win, and it feels like we have some sort of hidden gem this year with Paul Seawold. Let's take a look here at some quick all-star voting, because I feel like we're about a half a month or two-thirds of a month into the season, and I'm pretty sure, well, Drew Steckenrider doing okay with the All-Star votes. He's fourth there, but Paul Seawald leading the votes for uh, All-Star closing pitcher is really nice to see. Do we have anybody else that looks really obviously good? Not seeing anything immediately. We just came up against uh, Marcus Simeon, so that hurt Adam Frazier in fourth for second base voting. 
And although he's on a cold streak, supposedly, Jared Kelnick for the left field spot. Third, third place? I mean, he's not like incredible this season but he's got uh 15 hits and six home runs which is pretty impressive i would say only batting 231 so when he hits it it's gone uh he's just having a harder time getting that bat on the ball man we we're having a lot of success with these guys in the right field it's mitch hanniger in third place as well so definitely a lot of chances to uh get to the all-star game for our guys it's just not going to be easy. Oh, I didn't even notice. Eric Swanson in second. So second and fourth. And the all-star voting for our relievers. I've been playing with episode lengths on these. So for today, we are just going to make it through the rest of this uh, Kansas City series. Uh, unless we just have to sim through both of them. But six to three, we get win number three in a row. Improves us to 12 and nine. And it's a 4-2 win there to end the series. So we swept uh kansas city the royals looking a little bit rough at 8 and 14 logan gilbert just got the win that's great news for us i guess we can play tampa bay as well as oh this is gonna be pretty tough player locked is murphy's got two home runs can we make it three no one my batting the past couple episodes probably not doesn't mean we won't give it the good old college try three for three so he's got his two home runs and a double but it's only been good for two runs uh solo shots not getting it done down a run runners to the corner one out don't want to bat into a double play even a sacrifice fly to tie it up would be fine quickly two and oh they might try to pitch around us don't want to give up a, a three run homer that's for sure especially for the third of the day what can we get 2-0 waiting for our pitch had to swing on the fastball definitely late didn't even get a chance to get up there it's the first strike of the at bat that was uh, that was a terrible swing i have no excuse for that one <laughs> uh super late on the way inside fastball two and two now we're gonna be kind of battling can we get it loaded that would have walked us if uh wasn't too stupid kyle lewis on deck one out rather strike out than ground into a double play and oh that's good contact but it's just a little bit low is it enough to get the tagged up run man he's got 19 speed does he make it just barely bad throw from center field so at least we get an rbi but you would have liked a little bit more than that tie ball game top of the seventh when we jump back will it be a win or a loss or are we going to be down again two outs with a runner on second so we need a base hit into the outfield here it's Mitch Hanniger, 51 speed. Definitely something that can, uh, or someone that can get around two bases relatively quick. First pitch, high outside. Tough to swing on that. Second pitch here. Way outside on the slider. Kind of had to hold myself back from looking at that one. He's pitching me outside for sure at this point. We'll see if we can catch him sleeping on one in the middle or slightly in. Thought that was kind of going to be a slider. Got me with the fastball. Bad swing. One and two. Game on the line. I feel like I keep getting into these spots and we haven't clutched up once in the past couple of episodes. And that was a terrible swing. Slider got me swinging. Missed it by a mile. Tough loss. Can't win them all. But man, when I'm up to bat, I don't know if we can win any of them. Uh, maybe we can bounce back. Still three games above 500. There's a 5-1 win with Chris Flexen. Man, he started 4-1. Our pitching is okay so far. Uh, and, I mean, these games against Tampa Bay are not going to be easy. Final game of the episode, no matter what, even if it's just a sim. And we, okay, we get a jump in top of the ninth. Zero outs, down a run. Oh, man, we haven't done well with this in way too long. Uh, definitely nervous, that's for sure. We do have Mitch Hanniger and all three outs to work with, but I don't know. Andrew Kittridge kind of did us dirty last time. Got me swinging on that slider outside. He's got me swinging on a four-seam fastball inside for pitch number one. I got to just lay off my first pitches. Uh, too swing happy at the moment. And then the sinker right down the middle. We just, uh, I'm whiffing on everything. Uh, I tell you. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, one day I'll wake up and hit every one of those pitches. And now today, it's not a single one of them as we fell off the slider to stay alive 0-2. Anything to get on base would be nice. Obviously, a home run would be optimal. Didn't need to swing at the slider, but thankfully got a bat on it. 
Still 0-2, four pitches into the at-bat. You know he's going to be looking for something nasty, able to lay off the slider, thankfully. I got worried about that one. 1-2 one now. Chance. But he pitches the sinker in. I keep expecting these to break back just into the zone. And it's a strikeout swinging. Kyle Lewis, two for four. But in my hands, oh for a million. <laughs> I have no confidence. In our batting, laid off the first pitch for once, though. So one and oh. Getting ahead in the count is super important. Not something we've done well recently. And he's just going to keep trying to get me to chase the slider. Thankfully, we don't do it there. I don't even know if we swing here unless it's right down the middle. See what we can get. No, puts a sinker outside 3-0. and oh. Definitely not swinging here. Uh, I don't have the confidence to absolutely jack one out of the park. So we will take the strike that they give us almost certainly. That's a Thai France uh, on deck. And that's just going to be a four-pitch walk. So we get on base with Kyle Lewis, which is really good news. They intentionally walked Ty Francis said earlier, but he's 0 for 3. Tying run on base. Ooh, that's such a hard pitch not to swing at. We were just sitting with the PCI on it. I didn't want to pull the trigger. Still one out. Just if we bat into a double play, I'm going to be real hurt. And that is down the left field line. Just curving foul. Oh, that was going to be a beautiful little, probably just a base knock in the corner there. Good contact. It's been a while since we've actually kind of driven something with a decent launch angle. He's put two right into the middle of the zone, but it's quickly an 0-2 count to Ty France. We just got to fight off the uh, four-seamer inside the zone. Anything that we can do as he gets me looking. Thought that was going to drop out of the zone. Typically, I swing on those low, close pitches, but Sinker hits it. And it's two outs with Eugenio Suarez coming up. 0 for 4, 1 for 9 in the series. He's got a double. Double might be enough to take us two extra innings or at least the bottom. Well, all over the place on my first pitch swings. Well, here we go. Second pitch on the way. Got under it, fouled it off. And we have been in this position too many times. 0-2, two outs. Stay alive for now. Problem is, ooh, we're in a scary spot. I'm definitely battling. Yeah, gonna be swinging at a lot of pitches unless it's obvious they're outside. Or inside. I have a really hard time with those inside pitches today. And it's going to be a loss once again just to, due to my bad batting. I don't. We have what? Maybe a base hit today? It has been really brutal. I don't even know if we've have, had a base hit. <laughs> we just If we sim through the season, we might make the playoffs. But with me at the helm, it's looking really, really rough. Unfortunately, a loss for Jose de Jesus, the, uh, the free agent that we picked up. We're scoring a, run, a lot of runs, getting a lot of hits. But just not able to do it. Jared Kelnick went uh, three or four with another home run. Good game for him, at least. So that puts us 14 and 11. A solid day. Uh, we lost the first two to Texas. Won four straight after that. Lost one. Won one. Lost one. So one series win, two series losses, but we come out ahead. Three games above 500. And sitting second in the division. A game and a half back of the Angels, who are at 16 and 10. Honestly, we've seen worse. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. Curious to know your guys' thoughts on this one. I still am really enjoying baseball, but I'm curious how you guys are receiving these. Uh, they're fun for me to play, so I will probably continue to do them. Um, but definitely making sure that I mix in a lot of college football revamped. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch, my Twitter, my Instagram, my TikTok, and our community Discord. But all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Northwest Green Boys. <laughs> and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Bankley, and Warmaster777.